What if a power plant could run 24-7 without relying on the sun or the wind? What if it could be fueled by nothing more than seawater and freshwater? This isn't just a hypothetical. It's happening right now in Japan. The country has just turned on Asia's very first osmotic power plant in the city of Fukuoka, and what it's doing could quietly change the future of clean energy. But how exactly can mixing salt water with fresh water create electricity? What does this mean for our fight against climate change? And could this blue energy be the key to unlocking a world of stable 24-7 renewable power? Before we dive in, if you're as fascinated by energy breakthroughs as I am, hit that like button and subscribe. It helps me bring you more stories about the most incredible innovations shaping our world. In the humid coastal city of Fukuoka, engineers switched on something the world has only seen once before. This facility is Japan's first osmotic power plant, and only the second anywhere on Earth following a smaller project in Denmark back in 2023. What makes it special? Unlike solar farms that sleep at night or wind farms that wait for the breeze, this new plant produces energy around the clock. And it's doing so right next to a desalination center that supplies fresh water to hundreds of thousands of people. But how exactly can mixing salt water with fresh water create electricity? To understand osmotic power, let's start simple. Think of a cup divided in half by a special filter. On one side, you pour fresh water. On the other, salty seawater. The salt can't cross the barrier, but the water can. So what happens? The fresh water naturally moves toward the salty side, trying to even things out. That's osmosis, the same process plants use to draw water from soil, and the same process your own cells use to stay hydrated. Now here's the clever part. When water flows across that barrier, it doesn't just mix quietly, it builds pressure. A steady, natural push created by nothing but the difference in saltiness. Osmotic power plants capture that push. They use it to spin a turbine, which then drives a generator, producing electricity. In other words, no fuel, no smoke, no moving parts above ground, just the silent pull of nature doing the work. So how does Japan's new facility in Fukuoka put this into practice? The technology is called Pressure Retarded Osmosis, or PRO for short. On one side of the membrane, engineers feed in treated fresh water, even wastewater that's been cleaned. On the other, they don't just use ordinary seawater, they use concentrated seawater, the leftover brine from a desalination plant. By making one side much saltier than the other, they boost the difference and squeeze out more energy. As the fresh water moves across the membrane, the salty side builds up pressure. That pressurized water is then released through a turbine, just like in a hydroelectric dam, which spins a generator and produces electricity. And while the numbers may sound modest, the Fukuoka plant is expected to generate about 880,000 kilowatt hours every year. That's enough to power around 220 homes, or put another way, the same annual output as covering two soccer fields with solar panels. But here's the big difference. Solar only works when the sun shines. This osmotic plant, it keeps going 24 hours a day, rain or shine. So why is this breakthrough such a big deal? First, osmotic power runs all the time. Unlike solar panels that switch off at sunset or wind turbines that stand still on a calm day, osmotic power never sleeps. As long as there's salt water and fresh water, the flow keeps going, day and night, season after season. Second, it's completely carbon-free. No smoke, no greenhouse gases, no fuel deliveries. Just natural water movement driving a turbine. That makes it one of the cleanest forms of energy generation on the planet. And third, it's a perfect match for desalination. Desalination plants, which turn seawater into drinking water, are incredibly energy hungry. By placing an osmotic power plant right next door, Japan has found a way to recycle the leftover brine and turn it into electricity, helping to power the desalination process itself. In short, Japan isn't just adding another renewable to its mix, it's proving that blue energy, energy from water's natural chemistry, 
could become a stable backbone for future power systems. Of course, if osmotic power is so clean and so steady, you might be wondering, why don't we see these plants everywhere already? The answer comes down to efficiency. While energy is released when fresh and salt water mix, a lot of that potential gets lost. You need pumps to push water into the system, and those pumps themselves consume power. Then there's the friction inside the membranes, which slows the flow and wastes energy. On top of that, membranes wear out over time, and replacing them isn't cheap. The Fukuoka facility alone cost around yon 700 million, or nearly $5 million, to build. And yet it only generates enough electricity for about 220 households. That's impressive scientifically, but tiny compared to a single wind turbine or a mid-sized solar farm. So for now, osmotic power is still experimental, a technology proving it can work, but not it ready to scale into a major part of the energy grid. Japan isn't alone in chasing this idea. The very first continuous osmotic power plant opened in Denmark in 2023, built by a company called Salt Power. That project proved the concept could move from the lab into the real world. Since then, pilot plants have appeared in Norway, South Korea, Spain, and Qatar, each one experimenting with different designs in membranes. Even Australia had a prototype at the University of Technology Sydney, though it was paused during the pandemic. What makes Japan's facility so important is its size and ambition. It's not just a lab experiment, it's tied directly into the city's water infrastructure, powering a desalination plant that supplies drinking water. In other words, it's showing how osmotic power can fit into everyday life, not just remain a scientific curiosity. So what happens if osmotic power moves beyond small demonstrations? Experts say the potential is huge. Coastal cities all over the world rely on desalination, and those plants produce massive amounts of concentrated brine. Turning that waste into electricity could help offset their energy costs and make freshwater production more sustainable. In countries with natural salt lakes or large river mouths, osmotic power could provide a constant supply of clean electricity running alongside solar and wind. Think of it as the steady heartbeat of the renewable grid, filling in the gaps when the weather doesn't cooperate. And with advances in membrane technology and more efficient pumps, the energy losses holding the system back today could shrink dramatically in the future. That's why Japan's plant isn't just a local project, it's a signal to the world that blue energy might finally be ready to scale. Japan's osmotic power plant in Fukuoka may only light up a few hundred homes today, but it represents something much bigger, a new way of thinking about renewable energy. By tapping into the endless dance between salt water and fresh water, engineers are showing us that clean power doesn't have to stop when the sun sets or the wind dies down. The big question now is, could osmotic power ever rival giants like solar and wind? Or will it remain a niche technology for special cases like desalination plants? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the future of energy, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications because I've got more fascinating energy stories coming your way.